We all like a bargain, but sometimes we get more than we bargained for. I recently purchased a new transmitter and um, had no problems binding with the receiver that came with it. But when I tried to use two receivers that I'd bought from a Chinese supplier, neither of them work. I had to discover the reasons behind that and I'm going to show you in this video uh, a resolution at least to uh, to the problems with this receiver and uh, what the issue is with this one. What is going on then? The supplied with the transmitter receiver binds quickly and has no problem at all and the two that were supplied by the Chinese supplier, uh, neither of them work. Now this is a genuine FR Sky XM Plus receiver, uh, but that still doesn't work. And this guy is a third party copy, an FR Sky FT1000. Now I bought this a little while ago, and when I went back to the web page to look at it, um, they'd added a red line indicating that this receiver will not work with a European version of the Tyrannus. There are two versions of firmware that you can get with the Tyrannus. I bought mine in Europe and therefore it comes with the European LBT firmware. And this guy has two issues with it. One is that it runs the international version, which is incompatible. And the second one is it uses a much older um, RF mode of D8. If we look into the menu here, we can see we have D16 and LR12, and that's all. So we could not use that receiver even if we managed to flash it with EU compatible firmware. This guy, however, we can from the FR Sky website download the European version of the firmware. What is this European version all about, LBT? Well, LBT stands for Listen Before Talk. Rather than this is the EU meddling in our hobby and um, it has no reason other than to make people's life difficult, um, it is in fact a good idea. Listen Before Talk um, works better, certainly in crowded environments where you may have many transmitters, obviously different makes and such like. And it also allows the manufacturers to use the full output power before um, LBT was uh, invoked on this transmitter its output power was reduced to reduce the possibility of interference. Generally in life, um, listen before talk, I think, is a, is a great idea. I've encountered too many people who just talk and talk and talk, and it's very rare that they have anything interesting to say, whereas those people that sit back and actually listen first tend to be more interesting. However, we digress. What I need to do then to get this XM Plus receiver to work is to download and flash the European version of the code. So let's go ahead and do that. Here on the FR Sky downloads page we look into the receivers section and find our particular device, the XM Plus. In the downloads page obviously we want to look for the latest firmware and here we can see it at the top so clearly the files are identified as either FCC, International, or LBT, Listen Before Talk, for Europe. Let's uh, go ahead and download that. Having unzipped the files, we can see them here in the directory that I've made. And the one that I'm interested in will be the XM Plus LBT with the RSSI on uh, channel 16. Our next challenge is to get that uploaded to the transmitter. To copy our receiver firmware onto the transmitter to flash it, what we need to do is to switch the transmitter on in its bootloader mode. So both the trims to the center and switch on. And we can see now that it's in bootloader mode. And if we plug in the USB port, we can see USB connected. and go to our firmwares. Make this folder here for receivers. Now we can go to where we downloaded the file that we need. So in FR Sky, 
XM Plus and the file I want is the LBT with the RSSI on 16. So we'll just copy that. With that in place we can now eject the Tyrannus and unplug and switch off the transmitter. Now we are in a position to flash the new firmware to the module. Uh, I've made up a little cable here. When we look at the connections in the back of the transmitter, we're interested in the, the lower three. So the bottom one is S bus. The next connector up is ground, followed by plus volts, which is the battery voltage. So be aware that if you've upgraded yours to say a 3S pack, then this voltage will be too high for, and could destroy your receiver. So just be aware of that. I've got a standard battery, so I'm golden. Here is the connector that I've made up with the S bus signal, ground and plus volts. Put that on there. We have our diagram as supplied. So we have ground plus five and S bus on these leads here. Now we are in a position to flash the firmware to our receiver. Welcome to OpenTX. Long press the menu button to get into the radio setup. Page over to the SD card options. And go down to our firmwares and select our receiver directory and there's our file enter that and flash external module and we see firmware update error error opening file need to investigate that okay so after many false starts let's see if we can get this thing programmed now the first thing we'll notice is that just switching the transmitter on I can see now the receiver is working. The issue is that by default the external power to the module bay is disabled. So in the model menu you need to go down until you find the RF functions and here we can see the internal RF followed by the external RF. Now as I say by default this was off and I have set it to SBUS. I don't think it actually matters what you set it to but it must be set in there to enable power to the device. So having done that, so now when we long, long press and go to page when I select the LBT RSSI 16 file, flash external module, it is happily writing it away. And that appears to be successful. Going back into the menu now and into the model setup to bind, if I hold the little button down whilst I power it up, we get our two lights there. We can now release that button and select bind. I want to turn the telemetry on. And let us see if it is bound. And indeed the light has gone green. I have no way of checking the output at the moment, but I'm sure that uh, that is not a problem anymore. And that finally we are bound.